Hello and welcome to the hosting and playing on FAF video. In this video I'm going to show you how to host a lobby on default settings, how to tell whether somebody else has hosted a lobby on default settings, and um, I'm also going to explain which non-default settings are still keeping the game ranked. And uh, chances are that um, you have been linked to this video because you are a new player and maybe you just asked how to host maybe you complained because uh, somebody else kicked you from the game and uh, if that was the case i'm very sorry uh, people kick you from their games because uh, you have zero games and zero ranking and uh, that's why nobody knows how good you are and the only way to um, find out how good you are is by playing but some people don't want to take the risk and let you play because if you're going to be much better than uh, what they expected you're dominating the game and uh, they won't have fun and if you're uh, much worse than what they expected, you may lose the game for your entire team. And that is also not fun. So uh, basically there is one type of game where people with zero rank and uh, zero games are welcome. And uh, this game is called All Welcome. Or it's called Noob Game, right? Both exists. And All Welcome is generally uh, a game where you can be as good or as bad as you want and noob games are for uh, new people right so that should be quite intuitive and um, if you want to gain rating or lose rating right or have a rank in the first place uh, it's going to be important that you play on ranked settings and uh, the best way to play on ranked settings is just playing on default settings and um, you basically have this very long list of settings and this looks very intimidating and complicated so let me walk you through it. You press options right here, right? And this is the list of all the options and it's actually super easy. So you read each tile and you read whatever option is selected. And if this says default, that means it's on default. And if there is a value right here and that's not default, well, put it to default, right? That's extremely intuitive. Just put everything to default and your game is on default settings. So what if you don't want to access this options menu or what if you are in somebody else's lobby and you want to find out whether they have hosted the game under default settings. Well, you press this button and when this is ticked, your mods are still going to appear here, but uh, the rest of the list is empty, right? Because all the default settings are hidden and we can double check this. So for example, we put cheating to on. And this is a non-default setting because it doesn't say default in brackets here. And now if you are in this menu, you can see uh, cheating in the list. So it's quite easy, right? When this list is empty, it's on default settings. If this button is ticked. So we put this back to off and uh, we continue with ranked settings. So there are some situations in which games are on non-default settings. So one of the other options in each uh, dialog but they are still ranked, right? So default settings are always ranked, but there are some types of non-default setting games that are still ranked. And uh, this is different for, for each uh, row pretty much. And let me just walk you through it. So we start here, the spawn can be on anything. Uh, normally it's on fixed because people want to balance the game manually, but other options work too, and the game is going to stay ranked the team has to stay unlocked because if you unlock the teams people can choose new allies or they can betray existing allies and this is messing with the balance system so you should switch it to locked if you want a ranked game right auto teams depend on the map and basically you can also switch uh, auto teams right here and um, you can see if this is uh, top versus bottom then the two top players are in one team and the two bottom players are in one team. Uh, if you put this to left versus right, it's going to be left versus right. So very intuitive, right? And whether you change this here or you change it in here, it doesn't matter. And this can be set to anything and the game will stay ranked unless uh, there is an uneven number of players per team. So if you play one versus three, for example, the game is not going to be ranked. This used to be different for a while, but it has been fixed now. So uh, you won't uh, lose any rating or gain any rating if you have uneven number of uh, players per team. 
Now under game options, the unit cap is totally flexible. You can uh, put it to anything. Most people will want to have it on anything between 1000 and 1500 because uh, slow CPUs are not as much of an issue nowadays. Uh, anything much lower than that is uh, really go to restrict gameplay. So you should usually leave it on 1000. But any value is fine if you just care about the game uh, being ranked. Sharing unit cap at death is going to uh, influence whether people who die are uh, going to lose their uh, unit cap for the team or whether the unit cap is passed on to their allies or potentially even to enemies. And uh, you can put this to anything and the game will stay ranked. Fog of War is a setting, well I haven't actually tested a no Fog of War game with otherwise default settings and checked if it's ranked or not, but uh, playing a game without Fog of War is basically completely eliminating the necessity to scout and build radars, and um, I would generally not recommend trying this out unless it's a practice game, and then you want to unrank it anyways. So um, this setting is uh, usually uh, better left untouched. The victory condition, uh, well, if you put it to sandbox, it's going to unrank the game. And as far as I know, any other setting is going to uh, keep the game ranked. But uh, the issue is that nobody really plays Supremacy and Annihilation. So uh, you should leave it to, uh, you should leave it on Assassination, no matter uh, like what type of preference you have. This is like the only accepted setting pretty much. And uh, timeouts, well, there are some people who often have to uh, go AFK while playing. Uh, these people switch it to infinite. There are some people who um, basically invite a caster to the live replay of the game. And uh, if you have a timeout in the game, then uh, there is a good chance that the live replay is going to desync. So uh, these people put it to none, but uh, the default setting is three. Uh, whatever you use here, the game is going to stay ranked, right? Game speed, it used to be the case that uh, changing the game speed setting unranked the game if it was not on normal. Uh, this is now no longer the case, so don't uh, believe that if you put it to fast or adjustable, the game is going to be unranked. It's not. Right? It's going to stay ranked no matter the setting. This was changed. Observers, uh, well, if you have observers in the game and uh, that is per se not going to influence whether the game is ranked or not. But uh, basically, if you have observers in the game and these observers are uh, playing radar for you, basically they are telling you where the enemy units are, what the enemy is doing and so on, maybe friend on TeamSpeak or something like that, then uh, this is going to create an unethical advantage and uh, people are going to find out whether you uh, base decision on information you didn't have, they're going to blame it on the observers and uh, you may get into trouble because you were cheating. So uh, you should usually leave this off and only uh, put this to observers on if you can uh, make sure that uh, the observers are not creating an unethical advantage for either team. So this is how you should handle this setting. If you put cheating to on, it's instantly going to unrank the game. So leave it to off if you want the ranked game. The civilian setting is not going to influence whether you are going to uh, have a ranked or unranked game. It's uh, always going to stay ranked unless it was unranked in the first place because of some other settings. And uh, same for revealing civilians. Uh, you can basically uh, put this to any value and the game is going to stay the way it was. Same for pre-built units. And uh, I guess nobody plays with pre-built units, so you should probably just leave it off. No rush options. Well. There are some beginners who like to use no rush games, but uh, you are not going to find players who uh, are on an average or a good level of gameplay and uh, play no rush games with you. So I'm actually not sure whether a no rush setting is going to unrank the game or whether it is going to stay ranked, but uh, I would highly recommend you to leave it uh, off because it's also going to um, uh, really uh, make it difficult to get good at this game if you're used to no rush. Then um, random map, well there are a few maps such as Battle of Thermo uh, that are unranking the game automatically simply because uh, people decided that the game uh, on these maps is non-competitive or sometimes these maps are even unfair 
So there may be one team that has 20 mixes and one team that has five mixes because the map was designed this way. And uh, these games are going to be unranked. So um, if you put it to uh, a random map and you happen to get one of these maps, then the game could be unranked. Usually it's best to leave it uh, to off and uh, choose your map yourself. The score, uh, well, score on or score off is both uh, leaving the game in the same state it was before. If it was ranked, it's going to stay ranked. If it was unranked, it's going to stay unranked. Uh, you have to know though that uh, some people are really good at reading scores and basically by the score they can tell uh, what you're doing without really scouting. So if you don't know how to read score and the opponent does, then this is a pretty bad situation for you. And uh, if you know how to read score and the opponent doesn't, then this is also unethical to exploit because reading score is really not obvious. Most people don't play with score on. So you should leave it off at all times to avoid that one team has a free scout and the other doesn't. Now the share conditions, uh, looks like people have added some more things I don't know about, but basically the only share settings you ever see in a real game is full share and share until death. And the general rule is that you use full share on Seatons and share until death on any other map. And this is how you can grant that your a game is actually filling up because uh, nobody plays share until death Seatons and nobody plays uh, full share non Seatons games. So uh, usually leave it to uh, share until death. And um, both settings are going to keep the game uh, ranked if it was ranked before. Now the AI options, well the game is only ranked if uh, you play against humans and uh, not against uh, AI. So if there's just humans in the game and you put the AI cheat multipliers to non-default settings, then that's going to be okay because it has no influence on the gameplay and it also has no influence on whether the game is ranked or not. But if you put some AI in the slot like I did here, the game is going to be unranked. Now there is another tab called mods and um, there are two types of mods. So when you have mods on it's going to say for example 16 UI mods and if there are extra mods which are called sim mods then it's maybe going to say 16 UI mods plus 2 sim mods or something like that. And basically UI mods are going to keep the game ranked if it was ranked before and sim mods are going to unrank the game if it was ranked before. However, there are exactly three exceptions and uh, currently none of them is working, so you may uh, as well not care about them. But uh, if this changes in the future because the mods get updated or repaired, uh, it may be a good idea to know them. And the first sim mod that is leaving the game ranked, if it was ranked before, is called Arceus Explosions. And this mod is uh, basically just a mod that adds some new uh, beautiful explosions to the game, so it doesn't have much influence on the gameplay itself and uh, this is going to be a sim mod that leaves the game ranked. The second mod uh, that could be ranked uh, in some months or even years is called Nomads. Nomads is uh, basically the fifth faction of uh, Supreme Commander that was added by players and if this ever gets updated and functional and balanced then chances are that this is going to uh, be ranked in the distant future. So uh, probably in a few uh, years from now. And there is another a sim mod made by my clan, uh, which is called Equilibrium. And Equilibrium uh, kind of depends on politics now. So um, we basically have the means to uh, make this ranked if we wanted to. But uh, we are basically uh, checking that uh, it is going to be socially accepted to uh, put this on, on ranked. And uh, basically for that we just require a few more players and a few more testing uh, sessions. But basically uh, I would say Equilibrium is in a good, uh, on a good way to be uh, ranked at some point. And um, there is a tab called Restrictions. So slowly again I go to Options, I go to Restrictions here. And uh, this is the menu that shows all units in the game. And Basically, if you uh, click something such as, uh, let's say, the UEFT1 radar, uh, you can see this is grayed out. And this means that uh, a UEF player won't be able to build a T1 radar. 
And uh, build restrictions are usually the most harmless way of unranking a game. So let's say you have a Seraphine player playing against an Aeon player in a one versus one, and uh, you deactivate uh, the Cybran stealth field, right? That's not going to influence the game at all. And uh, the game is still going to be unranked. So you have to keep in mind that any restriction you choose is going to unrank the game. Okay? That's why you should usually not play with restrictions. And uh, if you want to have a ranked game, you may not play with restrictions. And lastly, there are a few situations in which uh, the game is actually on ranked settings, but is still not ranked. And this happens due to basically uh, technical issues in the practice. And um, one is the so-called desync. And desync is a dialogue that appears and that tells you that players have lost connection to each other and uh, the simulation of all the units moving and the projectiles and the execution of order and stuff like that, uh, these things are out of sync. So the game is actually uh, being interpreted differently by different players, and it uh, could be that they are playing an entirely different game that doesn't look alike. And if a game is desynced, then it's going to be unranked, because it is a completely nonsensical game. And uh, there are a few exceptions where the desync is not going to unrank your game, but uh, these are super rare. So usually, uh, as soon as a desync dialog appears, the game is unranked and you can leave. And um, there is a second rule that says that any game that is not a 1v1 auto match, so any global ranked game, uh, must take at least one minute of real time per player involved. So let's say you are in 10 player map, that means the game has to take at least 10 minutes in order to be ranked, right? If people quit or die after nine minutes and nobody's in the game anymore, that means that um, the game is going to be unranked and it doesn't count for the rating, right? But uh, there is one exception. So you have to know that this uh, 10 minute for 10 players, five minutes for five players or whatever it is, um, depends on real time and not in-game time. So let's say somebody has a really slow computer and uh, one minute in uh, the game takes two minutes in real time. Let's not hope so so early on, but let's just assume so. Then you have 10 players on the map, you play for five minutes, but the five minutes are 10 minutes real time. Then the game is going to be ranked, even if the in-game timer says five minutes. And another scenario is when people lag, right? They lose packages and uh, they have like connection timeouts. Then the real time passes on, but the in-game time does not. And what matters is the real time. That's what you have to know. And of course, if people uh, interrupt the game, let's say somebody wants to use the toilet or the doorbell rings and they pause the game and it was on seven minutes and then um, and they pause it for three minutes and there were 10 players in the game. So um, seven plus three minutes have passed when uh, the guy comes back and suddenly everybody dies. Well, that's tough luck. Even if not uh, 10 minutes of game time have passed, uh, 10 minutes of real time have passed, right? And since the game, again, must take one minute per player uh, to be ranked, it uh, will be ranked in this situation, right? So this is basically everything you have to know about uh, default options and about ranked options and about uh, whether games on ranked options are actually ranked. I hope this launch is going to help you and uh, you can have your first couple of games soon. Uh, enjoy your stay on FAF.